Hey guys, it's your boy Hong and welcome to another episode of Movement of Expression. Now today we have an exclusive uh, episode for you as we are going to be doing our very first deep dive into a photographic hair collection. I know that lately I've been going on a bit of a rant and doing a bit of vlogging and product reviews and all that sort of stuff. But the idea behind that was for me to be able to learn how to use one, to one utilize my camera a bit better and also learn how to uh, do some video editing because it's all new to me. So yeah, I figured I would let you guys know that. I'm at the point where I'm actually okay with it now and I figured to move our channel to the next level, um, I need to go onto OBS and Twitch and do some live streams so that way I can interact uh, with the audience a bit better. But not only that, um, to, have a bit, to have a bit of an open discussion. So I might even create a bit of a Discord later down the track. Who knows where this will go? I don't know myself either. But the very first hairdresser that I wanted to showcase uh, is a guy named Angelo Seminara. He is a legend in the industry. So for those who don't know who he is, he worked for Davines for many, many years, has won the British Hairdressing Awards four times and has won the AIPP, which is a global hairdressing event, three times. So um, he's quite high up in terms of recognition in the industry. And if you guys ever had an opportunity to be able to listen or to watch one of his videos, the way he speaks about how he creates his work or, or, or his inspiration, it very much sounds like a poem. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Hey guys, if you like this sort of content, make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button and let's do this. Cheers. Alright guys, so I'm just uh, reading this at the moment. So this is uh, the theme for the 2014 collection Souls. So Angelo Seminara's 2014 collection captures the souls of a woman in all her guises. You know, think exotic flowers and fulsome fragrance. You know, sparkling diamonds and luminescent pearls. Resolute shapes and romantic sweeps. Uh, each image is influenced by decisive colours or swirls of iridescent hues. These looks, these are, sorry, these are looks which are tr transcend femininity to reflect the unfathomable depth of a woman's soul. Uh, so the hairdresser is obviously Andrew Seminara himself, makeup artist is Lindsay Alexander, and the photographer is Andrew Atul. So, you know, Andrew Atul is probably a name that you'll hear a lot on this channel because he just does extraordinary work. He's probably one of the most sought out photographers in the hairdressing world because he just creates these beautiful images. Anyway, without further ado, let's do this. All right, so looking at the very first image of Angelo Simonage collection. Um, yeah, so the look is quite interesting, isn't it? So it has, you know, it's pretty much natural in terms of um, the style itself. Just, it's definitely not, hasn't been straightened. It's probably just been naturally just let loose. Um, and obviously her, the model's uh, natural hair is probably, that, that is probably her natural color itself, which is the brunette. Now how he, the most interesting about this image itself is how he's created these uh, sort of intricate, I don't even know what they call it, but each section like on the top hairline, it's almost like he pieced it out and colored it copper and every inch of that section, let me just zoom into that maybe every two to three inches, he's created these indentation where they're almost like this sort of mint color um, and then left it straight again. Now, I don't know exactly how he's created this, but I can only guess right. So my thoughts on how he created this look is, have you guys ever experienced uh, where, you know, you're tonguing the hair and, and you know, you're doing a, a, a wrap dry, uh, not wrap dry, a wrap curl? Well, I think, have you guys ever experienced where like you've closed it too quickly but then you pulled it the opposite way and then it creates this indentation of lines? I believe that he used a very, very small tongue um, to do this and it did the exact same thing where he created indentations on purpose on the mint color to create the effect of this image at the moment. 
to me, it looks absolutely stunning. And it's, yeah, it almost, with the color combination and also the styling, it almost feels like he's created a, a, a different sort of material to the hair, which is absolutely extraordinary. Let's have a bit of a close up of this. I mean, look at that model. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, no, nah, it's 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 gorgeous. And then obviously, like with the clothing itself, like it had to be very minimalistic, right? What I find as a hairdresser is the moment you have more than three tones in the hair, you want to keep the backdrop and also the clothing quite simple because you want to make the hair the emphasis, you know, the focal point of the style itself. So you know, I, I really really like that. And the fact that, you know, it's clean, it's sharp, it's black background. One thing I'm not too much of a fan on is when people, I know it was in fashion recently, maybe the last couple of years, but the whole blur, I prefer my images to be quite crisp. So that's absolutely beautiful. Let's go to the next one. Holy moly. Are you guys seeing this? I mean, uh, Look, I, I mean, that would have to be a wig. That would have to be a wig. But how it's created, it makes it look very believable. Um, so, obviously, I th it's hard for me to um, critique and to make assumptions on how this was created because I'm a bit sort of in the unknown area at the moment. But <laughs> I can sit here and appreciate it, right? But if, I, if, if it was my guess, um, let's zoom in a bit closer for you guys. Alright. So, uh, I think, one, one, the hair is an actual wig itself that was put on. Obviously, they, they would like either brushed it all back or braided it back to be able to put the wig on. But I think this is all wig work. Um, how it was created was, I think that it's actually... When they had purchased the wig, I think it was completely white. And so what they've done is they've deepened the roots to give it that sort of balayage sort of look. And now in between, um, with the styling, so obviously you have to have a... Almost like a, a mannequin head to apply this wig on and pin it in place. I believe that how Angelo would have went about this sort of look is he would have got some sort of metal rod. Um, and I've done this with some of my looks before as well, but I think he's got like a metal rod in between, pulled it right up and then used the straighteners and clamped it just slightly over the top to create the crease through it. And it kind of gives you that almost like that sort of ripple effect that's happening at the moment. And how you place um, your tail comb, your metal tail comb, will determine where it actually sits. But for this sort of style, I think it's also very important to note that you have to start from the top first because the moment you create indentation from the bottom and work your way up, then the ripples start to break apart a bit. And then to finish it off, like, let's have a look. Yeah, so to finish it off, I think he came through the top with maybe like a, I don't know, like a, like a spray gun or, or some sort of color aerosol um, and used like maybe like a piece of paper or a stencil to create a bit of a barrier and put it just above where the, the, um, the ripples are and then obviously just sprayed over the top. I think that's how he created it. But because it's like one, the balayage looks absolutely amazing um, and it blends like really cleanly. And two, obviously the the hair itself in terms of the base color, which is white, looks very clean. Um, it, it adds to the whole feel to the, to the, um, to the look. Mm. And then obviously with, with, the, with the gold sprays going through there as well and how it was uh, pinpointed in specific areas. It looks absolutely amazing. I mean, this is the genius work of Angela Seminara, right? Like, how he creates his look and how he thinks about them, like, I, I just don't know. But yeah, beautiful model, uh, beautiful photography. Um, 
there's not much like in terms of pose itself there's not really much to it but it's enough to give you that sort of dramaticness to to the overall look and i absolutely love it wow all right let's go to the next one guys i'm so excited okay so when i look at this uh sort of uh overall look it, it does really come back to his um his theme, he was talking about like hues, sweeps, iridescence, uh, colors. Um, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. It reminds me, I mean, it's very free flowing. I mean, you, you look around the sort of edges to the look. Yeah, you look around like the sort of edges around there. Um, you know, he left it quite free flowing. Um, so my guess on how he created this sort of look in terms of the styling is hmm to be honest with you I'm not very good at styling this sort of looks but I think he used a, he used products to give it the hair a bit of grip to be able to create this sort of look but it's it's almost very effortless I think for this sort of look um, obviously the colors itself is gorgeous it, it really highlights the shape um, it really brings out um, the hairstyle itself, but it's very raw. Like I think the, the thing we have to understand about the style, it's very raw. raw. It, it almost feels like it's been like inspired by like geisha or, or like the silhouettes of a geisha. Um, but no, it's it's beautiful. I don't think the hair um, itself would have uh, held in in place that well. But I think for this particular style, I think it was more about just capturing everything in its place where it should be at that point in time. And it's saying, to, it's saying that all headdresses kind of work towards, you know, sometimes you might not have the greatest hairstyle um, or you might think saying it looks great, but it actually doesn't on camera. And you're just waiting for whether, you know, you're just blowing the hair to create the certain look to get a specific hair to hit its money shot. Um, but no, I really, really love this hairstyle, and obviously, like with the clothing, again, it's a very simple black background. Um, and I love how he left all the flyaways out. It just adds a bit more rawness to it, and then obviously with the styling, with the, a bit of the bun on top as well. But I think the the, the true um, what really stands out for me most is more the iridescent colours that's going through, which is what he said in the theme. So. No, I, I love it. So let's have, let's quickly go back for a second. So you know we have um, we have one that's uh, you know long hair. Um, we also have another one that's long hair, and then one that's been put up. What's the next one? Okay, that's interesting. Let's have a look. Yeah, so, I mean, overall, as an image, it's like, man, look at the eyes. It's, it's, it's got that punch to it, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, in terms of the, how he created it, uh, my only guess is with hair extensions, with hair wefts. So, you know, if you can create a bit of a base, whether it's just a slightly loose base um, on a mannequin head, whether it's made of plastic or whatever it is on top, you can almost um, mold with a bit of gel. Um, so, okay, so first and foremost, what I think would have happened was he would have got like a, a blank canvas, um, got some hair extensions, put gel on top, and just slowly mold it um, and create a bit of a water wave to it, and then let that dry off. And then once that's finished, take that off and then start applying it to the plastic wrap. Um, on the mannequin and then slowly uh, you know working from a bit further down and working your way up because as you can see uh, through this image here it's obviously been layered and obviously uh, you know just creating different colors with it too um, but this sort of look I would imagine it's from like you know years worth of accumulation of hair wefts that's been colored and tried out and tested and trialed with but no, it looks it looks it looks absolutely gorgeous, um, and it kind of reminds me of um, like just like a snake sort of slithering through your face. <laughs> no, it's it's wonderful, isn't it? Gorgeous. 
Like you can almost, I don't know about you guys, but you can almost um, see a bit of the silhouettes um, just through, through the background as well. Um, but obviously they're not trying to make that as a, a focal point. They're trying to, you know, just the front on body shots uh, with the hair. So yeah, no, I, I, I love that. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this one's a bit more simpler. Um, not as crazy as what um, the other images were. Uh, yeah, okay, so, you know, as you can see, you have, um, you have the model obviously looking down, um, but the hair itself, it's, I don't know how he did the haircut, but you can see there's a bit of a solid fringe that's been really heavily chipped into. Um, almost like an intersection where it's just heavily chipped into. Um, still slightly broken, so it's not quite a full fringe. Um, and then obviously you have some layers going through the crown area that's been spiked up there. But I, I think what I love most about this style is how flat he's created um, the sides to be. So even though she has longer lengths, I think he made it a bit of an emphasis to really flatten the sides down a bit. Um, and also create a bit of volume through the back, but also going back to creating a flat surface around sort of the, um, the the sides and also just underneath the occipital bone, just flatten that out and then obviously creating some loose textures through the back area. Now, I, I love that. And it, it also definitely breaks up the looks as well from what he's had. Because when you're doing a collection, you don't really want to go long, 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 because that gets a bit tedious. So. You want to be able to break it up with shorter haircuts or different styles as well, which is what Angelo has done. All right, let's go to the next section. Holy moly, guys. Okay, look. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much speechless, uh, speech, see I kind of speak. I'm pretty much speechless at the moment because for me, I, I don't actually know how he created this look. Obviously, the hair itself would be a wig. Um, maybe. I mean, this would take a lot of time, but the only thing I can think of, which would explain parts of it, but not all of it, is that maybe he... Um, he ta like... So, you have a board on the length of the hair, and then you would tape it with, um, not duct tape, but the, the, the is, is it called masking tape, over the top of it, and then color it to get like the straightest lines. Um, but I do, sorry, I do know that he also has this thing that he created a couple of years ago called the stencil as well. So it's almost like this um, board with a metal uh, railing that goes over the top of it. And it has like different patterns and you can just color over the top of it to create this little look. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't quite explain, especially around the fringe area where it's a bit more congested in terms of the color. But um, I do think a, a masking tape could be a good idea to be able to create that sort of look and obviously using different colors as well. But I love, I love, again, like guys, look at the model. That model is absolutely gorgeous. And I love how her lips are just slightly open as well. Um, but yeah, no, looking at the image itself, they kept it quite raw, they kept it quite um, plain, especially with the clothing, because she is wearing her clothing, she's naked. You know, back, the, the black backdrop uh, looks incredible. Um, and it's just so clean. I love how it just kind of sweeps and just bends very slightly. I think to achieve that sort of look, um, they would have definitely had to create what I call the money shot. Like, to get the height from underneath, um, not height, more width, um, and also to have the hair swinging around, I think, uh, yeah, look guys, I'm a bit speechless with that. I don't really know, but if you guys do know, like, leave in the comments below and let, and let me know how they created that, because it's, it's gorgeous. I was thinking maybe they might have put a blow dry underneath, but then I don't see any flyaways um, through the silhouette. So yeah, that's um, that's gorgeous. It's amazing. Are you guys liking liking this so far? He's pretty good, right? All right. So the next image, uh, yeah, 
incredible. We have a girl. Hmm. Let's have a look here. Okay, so I think. So the ways that you could create this sort of look is obviously you have to prep the hair first with a bit of um a bit of saying with a bit of grit to be able to mold it into place. But I don't think this style is as hard as what it looks. Um, with that very top fuzzy bit, I think what they would have done was create a bit of a triangle section through the top area um, to the the eyebrows, um, and then obviously got like a a bob not a bob pin a fringe pin and just kind of did an S bend to all the way through it and then put the irons over the top to create that sort of messy sort of afro sort of look um, obviously the hair's just been um, brushed out a bit and then flipped from behind from underneath to the top um, but I don't think that's as hard as what it looks but like overall we have to appreciate the silhouette um, and, and obviously what has been created in the past with this color combination it looks beautiful clothing is very simple backdrops are quite dark yeah no it, it, it definitely looks beautiful um, and so far like, all the images I believe have been quite strong as well okay so moving on to the next one so now we have a different sort of style to this um, you have I wouldn't say it's um, I wouldn't say it's a pixie sort of cut because obviously there's longer lengths to it but it just looks like a really disheveled sort of hairdo doesn't it yeah like to me it, it doesn't look like hair how Angelo has styled it it almost reminds me of feathers like chicken feathers um, I know that sounds really strange, but I know Angelo is the sort of guy that likes to replicate textures, right? So, looking at the hair at the moment, yeah, it's, um, I love how there's little, um, like, as you can see here, there's little bits that would hang up, um, because it adds a bit of dimension to the hairstyle, doesn't it? Um, and also, yeah, gorgeous model. It almost feels like, the hair's been butchered, by like saying that really nicely. It doesn't feel like it's a, a very um, seamless sort of haircut. It seems very blockish, very textured, um, very uneven, which is something that we have to all appreciate as well. So yeah, everyone loves a bit of the moulin, you know? No, it looks, it looks amazing. What do you guys think of this, hey? All right, guys. I'm really sorry about that. My um, my camera battery died, so I had to just replace that. So, yeah, um, guys. Just to finish off, yeah, you have this. Um, I'm gonna call it the chicken style now. Nah, no disrespect, but no, it, it's it's sort of a really choppy, sort of um, almost melody sort of feel. Uh, I'm sure it's not because I'm sure that the hair's been tucked around the ears slightly, but yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Hey. Um, but yeah, guys, um, let's have a look at the image as a whole. So this is what it looks like. Um, and you can see like each image itself is just on another level, isn't it? Like you have obviously the, the geisha sort of look, you have, I don't know, the, the pattern sort of look, uh, you know, the, the really um, tucked behind the ears, the, the, the swept across with, with the afro. Um, I don't know like his collection looks absolutely amazing and when he talks about his theme you can definitely see what he's trying to replicate there thank you so much for joining me on an episode of movement of expression now if you guys enjoyed this deep dive of Angelo Seminara's 2014 collection souls hey make sure you like this video hit the subscribe button and we shall see you next time cheers